right, so we are starting off by weighing about uh, 250 milligrams of benzophenone, and I'm gonna go ahead and measure that directly into my 25 milliliter Erlenmeyer glass. And 250 milligrams is 0 0.250 grams. I'm gonna try my best to get as close as I can to that value. Okay, All right, so next up we are measuring the sodium borohydride powder, and for this one we will be measuring out 0.13 grams. Uh, and for this compound, I'm actually going to do it on white paper so that we can add it to the Erlenmeyer flask slowly and uh, ensure that we don't generate too much hydrogen gas when we uh, do the experiment. So uh, I have measured out both my solid compounds. I have my benzophenone in my 25 milliliter Erlenmeyer flask. I have placed it in a small tray with some ice water and I'm gonna add five milliliters of methanol just to dissolve my solid. Okay, so there's two milliliters. I'm going to go ahead and start the magnetic stir bar. No heat for this experiment because we're going to generate some heat uh, once we add the sodium borohydride. And I'm going to just allow the uh, benzophenone to dissolve for a few moments before I start the addition of the sodium borohydride. Go on. Now that our benzophenone has dissolved, I'm going to start adding the sodium borohydride little by little. And we want to do this little by little so that we don't generate too much heat for the experiment. That's also why we are, uh, you know, doing this experiment over an ice bath. And as I'm dropping it in, you see a little bit of gas being formed in the experiment, but not much. And the reason for that, again, is uh, we are generating some hydrogen gas at the bottom, which will bubble out. Okay, now that I got the initial uh, reaction to go, I can add my sodium borohydride just a little faster. And I'm doing it still slowly just to not overwhelm the system here. Okay, at the bottom we will see that we are creating a uh, a little bit of a milky substance uh, with some white coloring going on, and that's a good sign uh, because our compound should be a white solid that we isolate at the end. All right, we're going to allow the, this reaction to react for about 20 minutes or so before we check it by TLC, and uh, we'll be checking to see if we have formation of product and also if we. Uh, more importantly, we'll be checking to see if we happen to see any benzophenone still in the reaction mixture. Okay, uh, so students, we are about to spot a TLC for this experiment to see how the reaction has progressed. And uh, I have a standard solution that has a mixture of both benzyl hydryl and benzophenone in here. And it is uh, dissolved in uh, ethyl acetate. So I'm going to go ahead and add a spot of this to my TLC plate. And then I will also be spotting our reaction mixture. I'm going to put a lid on my solution. And for the reaction mixture, I'm going to have to pause our uh, stirring here. And I'm going to take a few drops from the solution and place it into my small vial that contains a mixture of both ethyl acetate and water. Uh, the goal is to add a little bit of the compound from the solution and uh, mix it up and then we will be taking from the upper layer since the compounds we are interested in are in the organic layer. All right. I'm removing a few drops from my reaction mixture here and placing them into my uh, situation bottle. Okay, so that was about four drops of compound. Well, of reaction mixture and I added it to my small vial and I'm shaking it up to ensure that we 
remove any aqueous compounds or move them to the lower aqueous layer. And if you notice, it kind of looks a little bit like salad dressing at the moment. I'm going to let the two layers separate, and then I will be spotting this uh, on my TLC plate as well. Ultra mixture, and I did two applications of our standard TLC solution. And now I'm going to place our TLC plate into our resolution jar. Okay, and once the uh, liquid travels about a centimeter from the top, we'll be back and uh, take a look under the UV lamp to see what we have. Okay, so students, we are taking out the TLC plate as it's uh, gotten about a centimeter from the top. I just need to mark the origin line before this appears on me. Or this one as far. There we go. And now we're moving on to the UV lamp to see how our reaction did. All right, well, if uh, we can show you a little closer here, on the left-hand side, I have the uh, spots of the standard. So down below, we would see our benzhydryl, and up above, benzophenone, because benzophenone is less polar, so it moved up. But if you look very closely, uh, we only have a small spot here from the reaction mixture, indicating that we have only benzhydryl. And it's not extremely dark. I probably should have put down a couple more uh, um, applications from my reaction mixture, but it's uh, pretty present right here in the reaction mixture. Uh, since we don't have a spot for benzophenone, that means that our reaction is done. All right, so since our reaction has gone to completion here, I'm going to go ahead and uh, stop the solution from spinning, and we're going to uh, work up our compound by adding some water. So uh, I have pre-measured here in a small beaker 20 milliliters of uh, cold water, and I'm going to go ahead and add my reaction mixture to it. We should see some precipitation occur right away. I'm going to ask you to get a little closer so that you can observe this in real time. All right, that is looking good. Now, I'm also going to use my magnetic stir bar retriever to, oh well, I actually did pretty good in making sure it didn't fall on through. All right, now that our solution is precipitating, I can let you know, yes, it does get a little bit warm at this point, so slightly exothermic. And uh, since our compound is pretty much well precipitated at this point, we're gonna go ahead and filter it using a Buchner funnel. I'm gonna just wet the filter paper with a small amount of water and turn on our vacuum. Right, and here we go. I'm going to go ahead and give our solution a little rinse down. A little more water. And once this finishes filtering, we'll be able to uh, isolate the solid and weigh out uh, our mass. So after uh, drying the product, uh, we have this final solid as our Benz Hydro product. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and take this to the scale, weigh it all out, and see what, how much mass we have isolated. Okay, so students, we have uh, measured out the amount of solid that I could uh, scrape out of my Buchner funnel and filter paper. And we do have a little bit of product loss because I wasn't able to scrape everything out. But we see that we have a mass isolated of 0 0.1332 grams. And uh, I will give you a, a little synopsis card in just a moment. We're going to skip over the recrystallization portion and test this compound at the uh, infrared, see how well it matches to a uh, standard infrared of Ben's cycle. Do some of these samples on the infrared machine so that we can uh, test our sample and see how how well we did in terms of the experiment. So the goal here is to see now an alcohol group for the benzhydryl uh, since we have reduced the benzophenone. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and measure the sample and let me take off my gloves so I can type here. Go 
we're going to go ahead and do So we see an alcohol peak starting to grow pretty significant so that would be right here in this area uh, this looks like hydrogens that would be connecting to a benzene ring and okay let's go ahead and flip this to the right direction wonderful and we're going to ask it to correct my baseline okay and let's go ahead and identify some peaks So the significant situation here is that we should no longer see a ketone peak. I'm going to double check and see what we have there. Okay, that looks like it's a benzene. And I'm going to add a second region just to ensure that we don't have a carbonyl. Uh, 1771, that looks like it's out of range for a ketone. That would be too high for a ketone. I'm going to go ahead and add a region. And we're going to get some values here for the alcohol and hopefully those are some hydrogens that are bonding to a benzene ring to the right of this peak. All right, looks pretty good so far. I'm gonna go ahead and click Save, and I will provide you with uh, this infrared on iLearn. All right, just to recap, this has been the uh, reduction of benzophenone to create benzhydro, and uh, this is just a recap on the reaction scheme. Uh, so just to reiterate some masses, we started off with uh, 0.2519 grams of benzophenone. We added 0.138 grams of sodium borohydride, dissolved in 5 milliliters of methanol, and our product that we received back is 0.133 grams of benzhydrol. Uh, and without recrystallizing, we were able to isolate the product in a pretty good and pure yield. Uh, thank you for watching, and we will see you next time with the oxidation reaction.